In this video, we're going to continue our product repository implementation from the last video, c -sharp Programming SQL Execution Injectable Service. We are going to implement a bulk upload feature to improve the performance using Dapper. Hey, it's Justin Colson with SparkPoint University, where we aim to provide the advanced techniques that will take your skills to the next level. If you're new here, be sure to hit the subscribe button below and keep in mind that all links we discuss will be provided in the description. So let's jump right in. In the last video, we designed and implemented an interface to allow for simpler injection and execution of SQL commands. However, we created some inefficient code in the process, specifically around inserting product attributes. In the current implementation, these attributes are inserted one at a time via for loop implementation. The disadvantage of this approach is the need to have multiple round trips to the database engine, which can be very expensive. In this video, we're going to implement a bulk upload feature for Microsoft SQL Server using user-defined table types. In .NET, we will need the data table type to prepare the data for transport. This data table will then become a parameter within the SQL, as if it was a table in the database. By implementing these pieces, it will allow us to take a single round trip to and from the SQL engine, saving on the network cost. Please note this technique currently only works with Microsoft SQL Server. For engines such as MySQL or PostgreSQL, other approaches must be used. Let's get into the code. In the last video, we implemented an I product repository, which contains one method, add product async. In this method, we insert the product uh, data and then we insert the product attributes. Unfortunately, the product can have many attributes. You can have two, three, 10, or 100 attributes. We don't know. This is a very arbitrary table uh, to allow flexibility in terms of how we actually program our uh, business application. The way we implemented it, and we did it in a way that's a little more naive, is that we insert the product using this SQL statement here, but then we loop using a for loop each attribute. This means that we will have uh, round trips to the database based on the number of attributes that are being added, plus one, because we have to go at least once to get the product inserted. How can we improve this? Well, uh, the primary example we're going to use is with Microsoft SQL Server, and it's going to be using user-defined table types. So let's go ahead and create one. We're going to go to our database. We're going to go into here, and we're going to add a new, a new folder. We're just going to call this um, table types. Okay. Right-click. We're going to add. Yeah, it doesn't look like you, you can add it directly from the list, so we'll come into here. Find the table type, user defined table type. There it is. Um, and this is going to be, let's name it um, P value. Hmm, uh, let's say key value list. And we'll actually call it a string key value list in case we ever have uh, key values that maybe aren't strictly strings and strings. So we'll hit add. And let's define this. So create type DB string by string key value list. We don't need an ID, but what we do need is we need to have our key. And we'll use the same parameters we have here just to keep it simple. 64 and max. So let's do that. The key is going to be a var char 64. And value is going to be var char max. Well, not null as well. All right, that looks good. So we're gonna utilize this table type in order to um, upload our data in bulk. So when, the way we're gonna do this, we're gonna actually create a data table in the process. So first things first, this is very specific to our database. So we probably don't wanna put it in these generic uh, sections of the code. We really wanna keep it with wherever our product repository is because it is very specific here. Uh, if we had a very generic database that was implemented across the board, maybe we could separate that out. Fortunately, we don't have that, so we're just going to add it here for now. So we're going to call this, um, we'll do internal. Internal static, uh, we'll call this um, SQL extensions is fine for now. And i got to have my class. All right. And we'll just, we'll just pull this out for now. Okay, so in order for this, well, it'll go eventually. In order for this to work, 
what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create a data table and this data table is going to have to match up with our UDTT that we just created. But we want to make this an extension method so it's easy. Now our attributes are actually I think a dictionary of string string just to keep it simple it's a dictionary of string string. So there we go. So let's utilize that as our extension and we're going to say static oops static and we're going to say i custom query parameter we'll talk about this one in a minute this should be inside a dapper there it is and two sql parameter this dictionary string string um it's false value all right okay so this custom query parameter is a dapper aspect. So it's, it's an interface that they use um, to be able to convert a parameter uh, that you want to build. Uh, so you can see here, add parameter. It just It's, it's a, an easy uh, interface that you can implement yourself, but dapper will use this to actually um, push this into the proper SQL statement that you pass in. So we're going to have to pass this back, but there's easy ways to do that. So let's create the data table now data table and I don't think the name matters but we're going to use the same name anyway just to, so that we can recognize it if we ever have to look at the look at it and we're going to say dot columns dot whoops ut dot columns add and we're going to call this one key and it's going to be a type of string ut dot columns add value type of string perfect now all we have to do is insert all this stuff into this data table so we'll just say kv in value and we're going to say ut.rows.add and it's going to be kv.key kv.value easy enough okay and then last thing we need to do is we actually need to turn it into a custom query parameter now uh, the SQL mapper actually has this already built in and basically you say as table value parameter and you name the table properly. So we're going to say ut dot as table value parameter. This comes from Dapper as well. And we need the type name. So we're going to say dbo. Whoops. Yep. There we go. String key value. Look, making sure it's case properly. So there we go. We have now created a data table type and we've also created a, uh, a way to actually make it into a SQL parameter. Okay, how do we use it? So now that we have the, the underlying pieces, we can actually go back to our, get rid of this SQL product repository and we can replace it. But the thing we need to do first though is we need to create our new SQL statement because we can now put this in one statement and only go to the database once by doing this. So we're gonna just do a new one up top here and we're gonna say, we'll just call it SQL for now. And we're gonna copy this up to here because we still need to insert but the difference here is instead we're going to go declare we're going to call this product id equals and we don't actually have to do this anymore i know this is going to be an int perfect so we just now got so we're going to insert the product we're going to then put our scoped identity or our product id into a variable and then the last thing we need to do is actually insert into the attributes table. So we're going to pull this attributes table up here. And instead of using values, we're going to use a select statement. So we're going to say select, and we're going to say product ID, the variable we have. We're going to say key, and we're going to say value from now. Uh, in this case, we want to name our table parameter. So why don't we just call it product attributes? So we're going to insert. So product attributes is going to be that table we just created. And we're going to insert that into our statement. Uh, so that's going to be fairly easy to do. And we're going to insert into. Then we're going to select all product attributes that we found. And then we're going to use that product ID that we just had all in one statement. The last thing we're going to want to do is because we need that product ID, we're going to still select product ID so we can get it back. And that's it. So we still need to inject a couple parameters here. So we have name and description. We still need to inject those. 
this is defined here, so we don't need to inject product ID, but product attributes we do. And this acts as a table inside the SQL statement. So we're going to comment this out for now. It'll help us know what's broken. And here we go, our product ID. So let's change this one around. We're going to go SQL here. We'll do a comma here. We're going to say product attributes equals product.attributes dot um i think we need to add our extension because i think two sql parameter there we go okay and if not it will be null is that true i actually don't believe this will work if attributes is null so what we're going to do is we're going to make it empty so if product dot attributes is equal to null then we're going to do this. This is not ideal. Um, in fact, what I should do is probably make a copy of the product. That way we're not changing the original object. Um, it's bad practice. We'll actually go through a video on how to do this a little bit better. This is more for demonstration of the actual uh, SQL parameters. But just in case this is null, um, it will still work. We can get rid of this. It won't be null now. We'll just put that check in there to make it easier on us. Okay, so we now pass in name, description, product attributes. We're changing into a data table, which then creates it into a custom query parameter, and that will get injected. So we don't need this part anymore. We'll just get rid of that. And really, we don't need to do this anymore. We can actually do this directly. So we can just say, let's return it directly. We'll kill that. We can get rid of these old comments. No reason to have those anymore. And look at there, we now have a fairly simple executor statement, which really we just pass in the product attributes and we have one singular statement. We probably ought to make sure this works though. So since we added um, this new value, we need, to pub we need to publish this. So we're gonna publish. And we're going to choose one. Publish my database and publish. And we have published our new table type. So let's go back and just ensure that it's here. Um, we're going to go to, let's refresh our view, programmability. It's going to be under types, user find table types, and there it is. So let's test. Let's make sure this still works. Ooh, he's not happy. And the reason he's not happy is cannot insert value of null into the column value table because it's just, I made a mistake. So let's fix that mistake because the value actually can be null. I was not thinking about that when I was writing this. I apologize. We go back to here. This can be null. There we go. Now because I changed it though, we have to of course republish. Okay, that should fix it. So I made a mistake just a minute ago, so I just corrected this. So if I do select, and when I do select here, that was incorrect. What actually has to be is just scope identity. I just made that mistake, but I just corrected here. And now we hit play. Let's make sure it still works, or that it does work. And one call, see what happens. 15, 16, okay. So let's go check, make sure everything got inserted properly. Let's go here first. Playing cards, microphone got inserted and brand color and size got inserted as well. So we have successfully switched this out to be a single call all the way through. Now, as a side note, I like this formatting style. Um, I've seen stuff bunched together and, and bundled up, but this feels very easy and very readable. So you can see here I insert, then I get back the product ID, then I insert all the product attributes, then I select. Now there are some alternatives to doing it this way. One major alternative that people will use is they'll create a table a temporary table in the session um, that's useful and then what you do, do instead is you actually use the bulk upload operator for SQL Server to get that information up into the server then you select from that temporary table there are cases where that is more performant although not always um, in some cases it will be more performant in this video we have created a framework for bulk uploading data into a SQL Server database this is useful when performance is critical by implementing this feature, only a single round trip to the database servers is required, drastically increasing the performance. In addition, we have kept the code clean by adding extension methods to transform standard C-sharp objects into data tables.
Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. We'll see you next time.